out there Disorder and confusion everywhere No one seems to care Well I do Hey, who's in charge here? It's jungle out there Poison in the very air we breathe You know what's in the water that you drink Well I do And it's amazing People think I'm crazy Cause I worry all the time If you paid attention you'd be worried too You better pay attention For this world we love so much Might just kill you I could be wrong now But I don't think so Cause there's the jungle out there There's the jungle out there Should you pull for Oren's FR and BT, his roles are a cover tank, counter attacker, and a debuffer. Banishing Blade, his skill 1, it is 5 HP attacks with 150% splash. Purgatory, his skill 2, deals 3 AoE HP attacks, and it inflicts group melee resist down for 4 turns. Dragon Fang, his EX, it deals 6 AoE HP attacks, also inflicting group melee resist down for 4 turns. His LD, Tornado, it deals 5 split HP attacks, it gives 1 free ability use, it inflicts group melee resist down and it also inflicts another debuff called full break for six turns his ld also grants two buffs time to shape your stories for 12 turns on himself and to his allies he grants sentinel for 16 turns from his ld you also are able to get a counter attack his counter attack will deal three split hp attacks it ignores defense it will heal by 50 percent of the hp damage dealt up to 35 percent of his max hp and it will also inflict the debuff full break on everyone for six turns turning the tied his fr will inflict group melee resist down for four turns and also full break for six turns legendary pilgrimage his bt it will last six turns it gives the party hp cap up of 30 percent and it has a leveled effect from one to three how it increases is whenever Orin attacks and this is including off turn and counter damage at level three the max it will grant him one level of high spirits upgrade controller once you're at level three it will reset back to level one afterwards high spirits upgrade controller gives him his BT variant of his HP attack called High Spirits. It will deal 7 AoE HP attacks in which you get one use of this per level of High Spirits upgrade controller. The max levels you can have is 10. Every time you use this attack, it will lower it by one level and the move will inflict group melee resist down for four turns. Orin's buffs and debuffs, time to shape your stories, will grant last stand. If you don't know what last stand is, it prevents the unit from getting KO'd when their HP is above 50%. This buff is what allows Orin to trigger his counter attacks and it will provide the party HP regen by 10% of their max HP. Sentinel, the buff that he gives his allies, it will grant them another HP regen by 10% of the max HP and it gives them a cover effect by Orin, meaning whenever they're targeted by a single target attack, Orin will jump in front of them and cover the attack. Full break, his framed debuff, to strip it down to its bare functionality, it's another melee resist down from Orin. His force conditions, you get a 5% whenever anyone's dealing weapon weakness damage including off turn damage you get a 10% whenever Orin is the one dealing weapon weakness damage including off turn you get a 30% whenever anyone attacks a debuffed enemy and a final 20% whenever an enemy moves they don't even have to attack in general as long as they act you're getting that 20% Orin's pros if you have the right off turn damage units with you his FR is very very abusable if you pair him up with some other off turn units that will be coming in the future <clears throat> Weiss uh, Kelger his FR is going to be ticking up quite a bit. Also, what's great with Orin and what helps make him unique to other tanks is the fact that he has very good non-elemental imperil debuffs. Of course, elemental imperil down is always great, but sometimes when you're facing lockout fights, it can be hard at times to rely on elements. So the fact that Orin still has the ability to make people hit for weakness damage non-elementally, I think it's a very underrated pro of him. Orin's counters are both strong and consistent, and there's no cap, by the way. No cap. On guard, no cap. No cap. Whenever the enemy attacks, no matter how many times it happens a turn, Orin will counter every single time. It ignores defense, and that's helpful. What's also great about his counters is that they self-heal. As a tank, being able to heal yourself with your counters makes you a much more reliable tank, in my opinion. What's great about his BT is, yes, it's only six turns, it's very short. However, even if the BT wears off, you still have all of those levels of high spirits. You can stack up to 10 turns, and even if the BT is wearing off, you can still use that very strong high spirits attack. The effect that it has 
Oz isn't necessarily restricted to only six turns. Orin's cons. This was a problem with him before, and it unfortunately still is a problem now. He has no debuff protection. All of his protection, all of his tanking capabilities are strictly for damage. It's not the worst thing in the world. A lot of tanks don't provide debuff protection. If your roster is deep enough, you can easily find someone else or another call to help protect with debuffs. This con, however, is a bit more specific to him. He can only give melee in peril for his FR. There are ways to still inflict weapon weakness damage outside of melee. For example, you have Hope Call, Edgar, who can inflict all three weapon weaknesses. However, for Orin, if he's the only one in your party that can inflict a weapon weakness in peril, remember that he can only do melee. Another thing with Orin is that he has no last stand for his allies. Of course, for himself, he has last stand, and that's really good. However, bosses who deal very huge AoE attacks, it's another thing you gotta look out for. Even with himself, even though he has last stand, he still can get KO'd with enough back-to-back -back heavy attacks. He's not invincible. He's not like Rubicante where his FR immediately heals him back up to 50%. All he has is secondary healing from his counterattacks, which are really good, by the way, but they by no means make him invincible. You still got to worry about him possibly dying. Is Orin's BT necessary? Well, without it, you won't have access to High Spirits, by far his strongest attack, and you'll be missing out on some defensive auras that his BT brings, but overall, his tanking capability is still amazing amazing and he'll still work well. My should you pull rating for Orin is an A+. Is he breaking the game like he did when his LD came out? No. But for people who really loved using him back then, and also for people who have him as a favorite, we'll be very happy to see that his kit is indeed up to date, and he is very, very much usable still. Thank you guys so much for watching with me. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!